Most of us started off with a cheap 3D printer, like an Ender 3 or something similar to that. And most of us now probably have better printers than that. And it raises the question, what do we do with our old printer when we don't use it anymore? Because we've got a better one. And that's what I want to try and solve today because I want a laser cutter and I don't want to spend any money. I have laser modules. I have an old Ender 3. Let's see what we can do. So you should remove everything so we just get this beautiful little carriage um, and that's where we'll mount our laser to. Now one of the important things is once you get here into Lightburn, uh, you need to go to devices and you can create a new device manually. Um, for an Ender 3, you'll be using the Marlin firmware. We'll call it Ender 3 Laser. And then I like to leave the word Marlin in there just so we know. Um, bed size for this, I'm going to use 265 by 265. Now the printable area is only 235 by 235. However, uh, the origin point is off in one corner, uh, off of the print area, and 265 is close enough to... Um, and it works well. Front left is the correct option for the Ender 3s, um, and that's it, hit finish. Now here's the, here's the new one we just made, um, and if we select it, cool, it doesn't actually, it won't really work yet, because what you need to do is go into uh, device settings, this is once you've selected that device down here, make sure we're editing the correct device, this will say device settings for Ender 3 Laser Marlin, that's what we just made. We just need to come in here and change our baud rate to, by default, my um, Ender 3 was at 115.2. Um, so we select that baud rate and hit OK. And we can now force it to reconnect by changing this to choose and then changing it back to our serial port. Bada bing, bada boom, look at that. We're getting some information from the printer. Uh, I had an error uh, if there was no SD card, so I put one in and it worked. Don't know if that's important, but um, we can tell it's communicating with the printer. Uh, and so now we'll press Home. Right. Uh, so next, let's work on getting the laser uh, attached to the printer. I'm using this Niji 20 watt laser module. I don't think it's actually 20 watt. Uh, so all I've done here is drilled through this little stamped in thread insert, and then I've drilled down this little boss, which is where the hot end uh, attaches to. And all we're going to do is insert the M5 bolt. Uh, put on a couple of washers or a spacer. This is just to sit the laser module out in front of the head of these bolts. I'll go ahead and remove this bracket from the laser module. Uh, on the back of mine, it has a tapped M5 hole and a tapped M3, M2, I don't really know, M3 maybe. Um, so we're going to be attaching this M5 hole to that M5 bolt via those washers. Now, it only has one fixing point in the middle, so it technically could rotate. Uh, I don't think it's an issue, though. There's not that much weight on it. Um, and I'm going to leave it for now. And then we take our laser, insert it into the holder, adjust that to get the height correct, and then we lock it down. And just like that, we replaced our 3D printer hot end with a laser module. Um, at the same time, what we can do as well, you want to unplug your Z stepper motor. So this is what moves your gantry up and down in the z-axis and uh, we don't need that. Uh, because it's a laser cutter now we we don't need a heated bed anymore so we're going to take the outputs from the heated bed to run it through this buck boost converter which is going to take the 24 volts from the heated bed and drop it down to 12 volts. The output, the positive output from this buck boost converter runs up through this cable um, back to the top of the printer and it's outputted to both uh, the green and the black wire on your laser pigtail. So the reason we do that is because the heated bed can be addressed via G-code. It's a G10 something. The printer turns the heated bed on and off. And by hijacking that signal, converting the 24 volt into 12 volt, and then running it through into our laser, we're able to control the laser via light burn. And that works really well. Okay, now that we have that wired up, we should be able 
uh, to just plug this into the laser module. Go ahead and turn it on. We'll leave this open for now, but I do need to plug in the USB cable. All right, so we'll get our piece of artwork already. Over here, let's do just a simple line engraving. We're gonna move this at a thousand millimeters per minute at a hundred percent power. Um, there's a million ways to learn how to use light burn. I'm not gonna go too deeply into that. Let's grab a piece of cardboard. Uh, we won't need this anymore. And this aluminum tray or um, base plate, whatever, works really well for lasers. Um, we already got that. I've also found that a bit of blue tack is pretty useful to stick your parts down. Good enough. And you'll need to calibrate the, um, the focus in the laser. That's probably close enough. Um, the cool thing about using an old printer here is that to adjust your focus, you can just use the Z-axis. So without any further ado, let's home And let's go ahead and run it. And here's your result. Don't know why it missed a couple bits, but uh, I gotta say, peace, peace, subscribe. So I'm going to install this, which is a little 3D printed block with this M5 bolt through it. So we're just using one, but it's not really needed anyway. And so I think we'll be fine. We'll put the gantry all the way down so we have as much flex as possible in this shaft. And I'll just go ahead and do that. Tighten this. And then we'll attach this wheel. And now, when we turn the knob, we can lift or lower the laser. Right, that was quite a cool text test. I don't know about using pop tart uh, boxes as uh, a test medium, but you know, you can see the text and the cut is absolutely perfect. I left um, some little tabs to hold the part in, and if you just rip those tabs. We didn't quite get through. Maybe one more pass would have been perfect, but still, it cut pretty nicely. Well, there you have it. How to make your Ender 3 into a semi-usable laser cutter for really not much money at all. See ya!